Afternoon all. This is another game which Nigel Short impressed me with from the recent Gibraltar tournament. It was in round eight against Gopal, a grandmaster, 2597 from India. He's rank eighth on the FIDE list. So Anand being number one, of course. So uh, E4, we're taking from Nigel Short's perspective this game. He plays actually the Kara Khan, C6. And he gives credit to the Larson variation, Bent Larson, the Great Dane. After knight f6, knight takes f6. Uh, you know, there's two main ways to capture here. Um, either g takes or e takes. And I've been experimenting with both in my bullet chest. But also, if you want to play even more solidly, super solidly, without any structural implication, knight d7. And then, and then slowly play knight f6 to be able to recapture with the knight. So super solid is also good. Um, or just uh, bishop f5. Okay. So knight g f6 with the idea of taking with the g-pawn. So it gets, gets some dynamic counterplay going on the g-file potentially. So white's aim is to neutralize that counterplay and play on his own trump cards which would be the greater structure, maybe the thematic break d5 against this structure. Okay, so Nigel's playing with the double pawns here. What has he got up his sleeve? Well, there's a surprising idea already in the opening. Of the bishop f5, knight f3, he now plays knight d7. Okay, so far so good. And white declares his intention to finish out of the bishop with g3. Now this move might be routinely passed over. If if you're playing black, you might routinely play a move like e6 here. Then maybe bishop d6, queen c7, and accept the white uh, white's damaged your g file counterplay with this fianchetto. And maybe you know later white's fianchetto bishop is going to be dangerous on the diagonal, especially if you castle queen side. There'll be things like b4, b5 coming at you. I know from experience that that's very very dangerous. So how do you cut through black? Sorry, how does the player with black pieces now cut through white's plans? Nigel's next move seems very mysterious at first and very unusual, especially given uh, it's not a check or anything. There's a white pawn on c3. Nigel plays queen a5. The idea is to interfere with white castling, believe it or not. After bishop g2, Nigel now plays queen b5. So I don't know, I should have really checked the theory of this. Um, or maybe some of you guys are gurus in this variation. You might want to tell me, is this being played before? Okay. Um, White plays knight h4 here. After bishop g6, it seems to me that this next move is in black's favor because uh, it's kind of strengthening black's pawn structure to me intuitively this knight takes g6 it's bringing another pawn to the center the h file might be good for dynamism as well okay black's lost the light squared bishop the queen's still being a nuisance here stopping white castling so against this white now plays queen b3 and does Nigel want to double white's pawns? Not particularly, probably, because then the A-fold dynamism has to be balanced in. All of these balances between double pawns and rooks being blasting you know, down the files is being taken into consideration multiple times in this game. First, obviously, from the, the standard G takes F6 in the last variation. Then this HG6. You know, White's always thinking, am I going to be able to squash the dynamism if I give black the double pawns and try and use the structure later? So the question is here in reverse. Does Nigel want to double the pawns? No. Actually, Nigel wants, doesn't mind getting double pawns on that side as well. He actually just reinforces his queen now with a6. So obviously both players have watched the Capablanca game where Capablanca accepted double pawns on the queen side and then later healed his pawn structure with advantage. Is that really going to happen here? Isn't the thematic break in this position d5 to try and give black more pawn islands? Well, actually, white plays d5 now. And Nigel really kind of encourages more white to exchange queens off. Uh, he plays knight c5, attacking the queen, 
threatening knight d3 check. So white takes the queen off, and after c takes b5, who's got the trumps here? That's the big question, the positional trump cards, the favourable imbalances. Well, white's got the two bishops. Is this pawn a strength or a liability? It's not really going anywhere at the moment with this guy. It's got a potential blockade square, d6. Potential frontal pressure on the d-file. These rooks, you know, they're potentially useful, but where is this bishop going? That's one question. Where is this knight going? Well, actually, we'll see now beautiful coordination of knight and bishop on the c3 square pretty soon. King e2 is played, and now knight a4. The c3 square is being put under fire. White neutralizes some of the h-file pressure. Now bishop h6, saying, you know, I don't mind the exchange of the dark square bishops. I want to rob, rob you of the two bishops. White avoids that by playing f4. Okay, now we see f5 though. So putting restraints on white structure, hemming the bishop in. Bishop can go to this lovely Fincetto diagonal. So positionally, uh, you know, Nigel's playing uh, fun and games with his pawn structure, accepting the double pawns, knowing about the blasting rooks are going to give him compensation, dynamic compensation and pressure. What is he going to do with that pressure? Hopefully some damage to the white position. After rook b1, now bishop g7. Okay, the knight's sitting very well on a4, very painful for white. Yeah, I think I think black's won the opening battle here with this novel idea already of queen a5 to b5. So bishop e3. Now Nigel castles queenside, immediately putting pressure on d5. Okay, white reinforces d5. And now king b8. So the rook's got greater flexibility now to come to c8 maybe. Put more pressure on, on the c-file, maybe use c4. So rook d3. But actually the rook doesn't do that. It doesn't play rook c8, it plays rook d7 instead. This rook now has the flexibility for either rook d8 or rook c8 and maybe then, whoops, maybe then rook c4. So king d2, rook c8. Look at black's pieces, they're kind of neat, I think. White's kind of restrained. g is out of the question, b is out of the question. h5 might be a break in the future. Okay, for the moment, white plays now bishop d4. And, okay, this, this was refused earlier, so Rigel takes this opportunity to uh, to take off that bishop. Okay, and now gang up on the d5 pawn, knight b6. White tries to reinforce the pawn with b3 and c4, he plays b3 now. Maybe, you know, he's pleased he's evicted that knight from a4, but the new square is putting all this pressure on d5. So rook c d8, mounting the pressure, c4. And now, putting even more pressure on d5 and d4 with e6. White's actually uh, maybe overextended here. It's it's remarkable, but uh, from winning the opening battle to accumulating this pressure now, um, and during the game accepting double pawns on both sides, it shows great uh, dynamism the use of pressure to win material. He's winning material now. It's all been justified really, the double pawns on both sides, the whole opening thing with queen a5 and b5. Maybe it's gonna bring life to this last of the variation, this game example, but this is a beautiful position to have. Okay, so bishop f1, and now he takes on c4, and doesn't have to rush to take on d5, he actually plays, well he can't here anyway, pardon me, because after this, um, you know, the b6 is now hanging, so he protects b6 first. Still, white can't defend these pawns on the center, surely. He goes back to g2, and now we see the snapping move to snap the pawn up. Definitely snap the pawn up. Pawn up. How's the rook ending looking? Probably kind of miserable for white, actually. It all gets exchanged off. This is a miserable rook and pawn ending. Made even more miserable now by Nigel's next move, which is very simple, very effective. Rook a5. Um, the last thing White wants is his king driven back and being <coughs> pardon me, in a very passive position. So for example, rook b2, you know, check, he'd have to defend the g3 pawn, and then maybe something like b5, and then king b6, and then a king march. 
will be highly unpleasant at the very least. So White decides to play actively. He gives up another pawn. He gets his king going. So after this rook a5, he plays king d4, letting the a2 pawn go. Of course, Nigel has potentially winning past pawns now. So the king goes in for the f7 pawn, maybe. But uh, it's it's a bit hard now. G3. And um, immediately, uh, you know, there's big threats here. If king f7, then rook f3. Something has to be done about that. But then there's also g2 and rook f1 then. So um, white takes time to play rook g1. But rook f3 anyway. King g5. And now the, the a pawn goes for it. Goes running. So king g4, rook c3. Now f5. Okay. Is white really going to try and get a dangerous h pawn? Is that h pawn really quick enough? Well, Nigel wants to leave his g6 pawn there, actually. He just plays a4. Okay, so after f takes, f takes king g5. And now he still wants to leave his g pawn there rather than the g3 pawn. He doesn't want this to be dangerous at all. He just plays rook c6, letting the g3 pawn go. Because he's got the two connected pass pawns on the queen side, so b5. White gives up, resigns. So I thought this was... An interesting game from the perspective of when to allow double pawns, what compensation you can look forward to, what you can expect to do uh, or your opponent to when, when you have the double pawns. The classic thing is to neutralize the counterplay. I've played loads and loads of bullet games in this last generation and I've been blasted off the board quite a bit uh, with white neutralizing the G file counterplay with G3 later. So this is a very interesting game from my point of view to play this whole line because there's a slight tactical downside of this fianchetto that the bishop's coming off this diagonal and as such if a queen can be on b5 or a6 but b5 it's more effective maybe because it's hitting b2 it's tying down the bishop to c1 so this is a very very interesting idea in fact i'm going to pause this video now creating this video i'm going to check chess games com and i'm going to come back to you so one moment, please. Okay, I'm just in chess game, chessgames.com, the opening explorer. So we're having a look at this variation. Um, so bishop f5, knight d7. These are very two, two very solid moves. But knight f6, more uh, accepting double pawns. So two ways to get double pawns, ef or gf. With gf actually being the more popular rather than ef. I've played ef as well. So we have gf. Then we have this idea c3, so it cuts out the queen a5 checks, reinforces d4. Okay. It also uh, actually rules out a tactical trick because if bishop d3 does bishop f5, um, I believe, well, in, in some lines, because uh, then queen a5 check and queen takes f5. So anyway, c3, bishop f5, knight f3. Knight d7. So g3. So this move queen a5 has been played four times before. Bishop g2. And how has how, this move queen b5? It's been played four times before and also queen a6. So we have this new game, which is this game. Knight h4. Go pal sure, which has been added. So previously a4. So 50-50 on queen d3. Queen c4. Bogus, Lufsky, Queen C4, there's also Queen D3. So Queen C4, there's a game here which um, we could have a quick look at. Whoops, is this a transposition? Transposition, uh, transposition. So black was annoying on that diagonal, stopping white casting naturally. Then we have a game there. But uh, let's go back to have a look at Queen D3. So this knight h4 was new. So accepting the queen exchange, there's a couple of games here. So short Sirwan. So short's actually been on the white side of this with bishop e3. So maybe he remembers the idea from Sirwan in the Monaco Rapid of 1993. Wow. So actually this has been played against Nigel Short. So here, black has... Interesting conversation for the double pawns. 
Is he going to play for the c5 break? So he gets rid of the dark square bishop. I guess he's going to play for d4 pressure. I mean, he's undoubled his pawns anyway. Now once the, once the healing of the pawn structure has occurred, sometimes we see black able to get the upper hand. Well, he's able to get a more aggressive king in this game. Gaining space, snapping a pawn up with a tactic. So that, that was a very interesting game. So the ideas occurred before one of Nigel Short's own games against Yasser Sowen. So I'm glad I've had a look at that. Okay, I hope you found that interesting as well. A little bit about the theory of, of what's happened here in this game. So let's go back to the main video now. Okay, so reviewing this game, okay. So this new idea may be knight h4. Right, instead of a4. So knight h4, maybe maybe it played into black hands. I really don't trust this because it looks kind of cosy for black to have this mass of pawns here with the h5 instead of the g file. So um, these double pawns make the position, for me, look actually kind of solid not 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 actually not solid or, or structurally bad but it looks to me a case of non-exploitable uh, structural weaknesses because to exploit these structural weaknesses there needs to be pressure there needs to be often knights to get into particular square colors um here it seems uh you know black's got a lot of pressure when he encourages f4 he's bl blocking in this bishop He's giving himself a fantastic mission on this diagonal positionally. So the potential for weakness has been exploited with a hemmed in bishop is getting reduced. In fact, the only exploitable weakness, it seems, is this poor d5 pawn. It gets victimized soon uh, with Nigel's just natural looking moves, casting queenside, preparing to put more and more pressure. And it's here, you know, that um, what, what in particular might be threatened here? Is a good question. Maybe this rook c8 actually supports knight c5 to e4, among other things. So bishop d4 anyway. And it just seemed easy from here that d5 was picked up. Easy peasy. After takes protecting the knight, and then d5 is still a major issue. I'm just winning rook and pawn in me. Quite easy to win here by Nigel Short standards. Uh, so his, his A pawn is going to just win the game here. Just keeps locking key on White's H pawn just to make sure of uh, no, no major counterplay issues. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.